Let's talk about fuses, because we will need to set these for the coming videos. So what are fuses? A keyword I just used is set. Fuses are like switches inside of the microcontroller that will either be set or not set, programmed or not programmed. It's almost like having actual switches on the microcontroller. You'll be able to switch major functions or set a specific behavior in the microcontroller. I'm going to give you an overview of the entire set of fuses within the AT Mega 324P. There are a total of 16 fuses, and there are two sets, which are the fuse high byte and the fuse low byte. Each byte is equal to eight bits. I'll put the high fuse byte here, and we'll go from bit number seven to zero. The first bit is OCDEN, which is on chip debugging enable. The default for this one is one, it's unprogrammed. One is equal to unprogrammed, and zero is equal to programmed. The on-chip debugging system allows a user to control the execution of a program on the actual controller, and it would be used uh, in conjunction with a software simulator or in-circuit emulator. The next one is JTAG EN, and that's JTAG enable. JTAG is another way to, uh, it actually means Joint Test Action Group, is another way to um, debug or go into the uh, control of the execution of the program in the actual microcontroller. This one is actually programmed. This is set at zero, and it's enabled. And this is one of the reasons why we were not using the port C for a lot of the programs, or any of the programs, uh, because JTAG is actually um, uses port C as a default. So if we wanted to use the port C for functions like uh, communicating with the, the LCD or um, using those general purpose IO pins, then we can actually unprogram it and use those pins. The next one is SPIEN, and SPI you should already know about because we use that every time we program the microcontroller. And we want to definitely keep this at a zero because this one we want to be able to program. This is the interface that uses the MISO master in slave out and MOSI master out slave in pins to program the microcontroller. The next one is the watchdog timer, always on. And this is unprogrammed. Watchdog would be used when you need it to um, you need a timer to determine whether the the microcontroller is stuck or is hanging, or um, you need it to elapse a particular time frame to force something to happen. We will most likely never be using the watchdog timer, so we probably won't be getting into this fuse at all. The next fuse bit is EE save, and EE save is related to the EEPROM, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. An EEPROM is a section of memory we can use to store data, and this particular bit, which is set as unprogrammed, will allow you to save the EEPROM on chip erase, if it is programmed. The next two have to do with the boot size. And the boot size can be used to set the size of the boot uh, the boot sector or the boot um, the area that the bootloader can be stored in and the bootloader is essentially a section of memory that is reserved for um, only when the the chip will be reset or turned on and it'll go through that memory location and, and execute whatever whatever program is is in that location because there are two bits there is a poss there are possible four options for sizes and the option would be 1-1, one, one, where this would be 1-1, one, one, or 1-0, one, zero, or 0-1, zero, or 0-0. Zero, zero. The default is 0-0, zero, zero, and that's actually the option for the largest size boot sector. I keep saying sector, but it's probably not a good reference to, or not a good uh, term to use. Uh, it's just a, a, an area of memory, or, a, or a, an amount of memory, and this particular memory is flash memory that it's using. So let's put the default in there. And the last high fuse bit is boot reset. This fuse bit can tie your reset, the reset pin, the microcontroller, to the start of the, the boot memory location. This is unprogrammed as a default. Now let's talk about the low fuse byte. 
And like the high fuse byte, it's got an entire byte worth of information, 8 bits. And the low fuse byte is generally about the clock source, the clock, and the startup of the microcontroller. The first bit is the CK div 8, and that means the clock divided by 8. And as a default, this is programmed. So that means that um, when you get your microcontroller, if it's a, an Atmega 324P, it will actually it is actually a an 8 megahertz microcontroller, and that's its native clock speed. But um, as you know, we've only been been able to get 1 megahertz because this bit is set and it's dividing it by 8. So when you have a it's this is like a prescaler. You're dividing your clock is actually um, only ticking on every eight ticks of the the actual um, clock that's built into the microcontroller. The next one is CK out, clock out, and this one is unprogrammed. And this fuse, um, since it's unprogrammed, we're not using it. This fuse actually allows you to output the clock signal to the pin B1. So that means if you have this one set. You can actually sense if you had a um, an, oscil um, a, uh, an uh, oscilloscope on pin B1, you'd be able to see the clock, you'd see, be able to see the pulses. So this particular um, fuse bit could be interesting in, in future projects where you may need that clock signal uh, to, be, uh, to be available on a pin so you can use it. The next one is SUT1, and the one after that is SUT0. And these are related to each other. And this is a, these two, two bits control the startup time for the microcontroller. This one is set at unprogrammed and the next one is set as programmed. We'll actually be looking at these in more detail when we're um, gonna be setting an external um, clock source, which is, which is the next one. And that is called, actually it's the next four of them. And that is CKSEL3, C K S E L two C K S E L one and then C K zero. And these four bits will be used to select your clock source. The clock sources can obviously be the one that's internal, internal to the microcontroller, which is what we've been using. It can also be an RC, a resistor capacitor uh, circuit that creates its own um, clock signal or um, an up and down analog signal to create a clock and then you can also use a crystal um, a quartz crystal or a crystal that um, that vibrates or resonates when you apply voltage to it the three is unprogrammed or programmed four is programmed i'm sorry the two is programmed the three is programmed the one is unprogrammed and the zero is programmed as a default. And obviously this is using the internal internal clock source for the microcontroller. So now we have a good general understanding of the, the fuse bits. How do we actually set these fuse bits on the microcontroller? Well, we can use the AVR Dude to do this. AVR Dude is the program that actually use, you use the program to to program the microcontroller. This is the program that establishes the communication with the microcontroller. And this is actually how you get your hex file into the microcontroller. But we're gonna be using AVR Dude to set the fuse bits. And we start out with writing AVR Dude, and you can do this at the C prompt, or where, actually wherever you're, wherever you are in, in, your, in your hard drive or your, your computer. Uh, there should be a path to where this is located, so you should just be able to type in AVR Dude. And then you have to specify what programmer you're using, and that would be the USB Tiny in this case. If you're using something else, you can replace this with that particular programmer, the name of that particular programmer. Then you have to specify the, the chip that you're using with the dash lowercase p, and I'll be using the M324E. To change the fuse bits, we're going to have to use... Um, the command for, or the parameter for memory operation, and that's the uppercase U. We're gonna be doing this two times, one for the high, the high fuse byte, and the next one for the low fuse byte. For the high fuse byte, we use the memory, um, memory type called H fuse. 
The next part in this command, we use a colon to separate. And we have the option of reading, writing, or verifying. And reading would, would be the R, writing would be the W, and the verification would be V. So we're going to use the W for writing. We're going to write the fuse bits. Another colon. And then the actual number. And we can use binary or hex. It's your it's your option to do so. I'm going to be using binary because we already have the binary um, within uh, this list here. So you can start off by doing the 0, B, which is the telling the, um, the command to use binary number. And then we start from the seventh bit and go to one. So in the in the high fuse bytes, in the high fuse byte, I had one zero zero one one zero zero one. So we'll just write it just like that. Actually, I'm going to write mine differently because I don't want to use the the J tag. So I'm going to unprogram the J tag from for my purposes. So that was one, and then a one for the J tag. 011001. And we're going to end this particular operation with a colon M. This is the format, and this means the immediate mode, which essentially means that it's going to take this number and, and put it right into memory. Um, generally, we'll, uh, this will, the U is used to actually put in a file or uh, some other type of format, um, like a hex file, and uh, you'd use the, uh, the appropriate format um, specification here. Now I need to do the same thing, but for the low. And all of this is on one line. L fuse, and a W again. And then we'll take the numbers that we used here. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then the same formatting symbol for M. In most cases, of course, you would be putting these numbers in because you'd actually want to change something in one of your, one of your options, like I did here, changing the uh, turning off the JTAG so I can use port C. But you might also want to change the uh, the external clock and modify these numbers so you can use an external clock. Or even just if you wanted to use the internal clock and just get 8 megahertz, you would unprogram this. One important thing to remember when you're changing the external clock, if you do specify an external clock, but you don't have an external clock or you don't have a crystal, then uh, your your chip will not be able to function because it needs a clock to be able to function. So you'd need to do this, uh, change this only if you have a um, an external clock source available, like a crystal or, or um, an RC oscillator, something like that. If you have a different microcontroller or you're looking for more information on the fuse bits, just go to your data sheet. The fuse bit information will be located at the memory programming area of the data sheet. You'll want to scroll down to where you start to see the low and high fuse bits. Here are the low fuse bits, which pertain to the clock source and the high fuse bits. In the next video, I will show you an example where I change the low fuse bits in order to use an external clock source. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.